staff of the Board of Worship, I would like to ask you to please turn off your cell phones and welcome to the service this morning. <clears throat> to uh, begin our worship service. I want to let you know that sweatshirts and hoodies are available in the fellowship hall for purchase. The lovely LCOS logo shirts are there. Uh, and the Brandywine Baroque will present a concert next Saturday, October 15th at 2.30 p.m. here in the sanctuary. The program is entitled Gainsboro and His Circle of Musical Friends. For more information, please visit the brandywinebaroque.org website. Uh, we will be observing All Saints Day on Sunday, November 6th. If you have lost a loved one since last All Saints Day and would like their names listed in the prayers, please contact the office by November 1st. And I would like to invite Phyllis Parker to come forward to give an announcement about the sand dollar. Come and eat, and then we'll have a 
and have a boot on. So please, in the, the armpit, we have flyers. You can sign up. You don't have to leave the money there or checks. You can pay Willa the day of the game day. So before you go, make sure you check, pick up a flyer, and sign up. We want you all here. We want to have a good time. So see you then. Thank you. Thank you, Phyllis. All right, please rise as you are able as we continue with our invocation. We make our beginning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, your bountiful goodness fills all creation. Keep us safe from all that may hurt us, that whole and well in body and spirit we may with grateful hearts accomplish all that you would have us do through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. 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 Let us uh, join in our opening hymn. <coughs> are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. our sins together. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We take a moment of silence to reflect upon our ways before the Lord. <coughs> Thank you. 
Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Hear these words. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. We join in the hymn of praise. This is the peace, the victory for our God. from the first chapter of Ruth. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land. So a man from Bethlehem in Judah, together with his wife and two sons, went to live for a while in the country of Moab. The man's name was Elimelech. His wife's name was Naomi, and the son, names of his two sons were Malon and Kilian. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem, Judah, and they went to Moab and lived there. Now Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left with her two sons. They married Moabite women, one named Orpah and the other Ruth. After they had lived there about ten years, both Malon and Kilian died, and Naomi was left without her two sons, and her husband. When Naomi heard in Moab that the Lord had come to the aid of his people 
by providing food for them. She and her daughters-in-law prepared to return home from there. With her two daughters-in-law, she left the place where she had been living, and she set out on the road that would take them back to the land of Judah. Then Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go back, each of you, to your mother's home. May the Lord show you kindness, as you have shown kindness to your dead husbands and to me. May the Lord grant that each of you will find rest in the home of another husband. Then she kissed them goodbye, and they wept aloud, and said to her, We will go back with you to your people. But Naomi said, Return home, my daughters. Why would you come with me? Am I going to have any more sons who could become your husbands? Return home, my daughters. I am too old to take another husband. Even if I, even I thought there was still hope for me, even if I had a husband tonight and gave birth to sons, would you wait until they grew up? Would you remain unmarried for them? No, my daughters. It is more bitter for me than for you because the Lord's hand has turned against me. At this they wept aloud again. Then Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye, but Ruth clung to her. <coughs> Look, said Naomi, your sister-in-law is going back to, your, to her people and her gods. Go back with her. But Ruth replied, do not urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me ever so severely, if, only, if even death separates you from me. When Naomi realized that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped urging her. So the two women went on and then uh, went on until they came to Bethlehem. When they arrived in Bethlehem, the whole town was stirred because of them. And the women exclaimed, can this be Naomi? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from the second chapter of 2 Timothy. You then, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses and trust to reliable people who will, who will also be qualified to teach others. Join with me in suffering like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No one serving as a soldier gets entangled in civilian affairs, but rather tries to please his commanding officer. Similarly, anyone who com Pete, as an athlete, does not receive the victor's crown except by competing according to the rules. The hard-working farmer should be the first to receive a share of the crops. Reflect on what I am saying, for the Lord will give you insight into all this. Remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, descended from David. This is my gospel for which I am suffering even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But God's word is not chained. Therefore I endure everything for the, circuit, for the sake of the elect, so that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Here is a trustworthy saying, if we die with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we disown him, he will disown us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful because he cannot disown himself. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise in honor of the gospel. Our Gospel lesson for this morning is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 17, verses 11 to 19. Now, on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, 
Ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, Were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Rise and go. Your faith has made you well. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord. Let us affirm our faith as we confess the Nicene Creed together. I believe in one God, the Father of Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of light, God of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being in one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man. And he was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and he went into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. We join in our song, Banned and Banished by Their Neighbors. Please join me in your hearts as we pray together. Heavenly Father, I ask that the words of my lips and the meditations of all who are gathered here be pleasing in your sight, for Jesus' sake. Amen. St. Paul wrote two letters to St. Timothy, whom he called his son. Perhaps he wrote many more letters to Timothy and to others, but only the letters included in the New Testament have survived. The Holy Spirit 
watches over his word. I like to think that Timothy was as close to Paul as John was to our Lord Jesus. In his gospel, John called himself the disciple whom Christ loved. In our lesson today from 2 Timothy, Paul calls his protege to join with him in suffering like a good soldier of Jesus Christ. He wrote, no one serving as a soldier gets entangled in civilian affairs, but rather tries to please his commanding officer. Similarly, anyone who competes as an athlete does not receive the victor's crown except by competing according to the rules. The hardworking farmer should be the first to receive a share of the crops. Paul said, reflect on what I am saying. For the Lord will give you insight into all this. Paul used these images to portray his teachings about how we should live as Christians. We know that God created two kingdoms. As the first verses of the book of Genesis declare, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Jesus Christ, our prophet, priest, and king, is Lord over all. He reigns over the earth and over all the created beings in heaven. Martin Luther taught that there are also two churches. The church victorious, comprised of all the saints in heaven, who have overcome sin, death, and the devil, and the church of all the saints here on earth, who are at war. That is who we are. The church militant, Christian soldiers engaged in a war. But who or what exactly are we fighting? And where are the battles fought? Paul's letter to the Ephesians in chapter 6 teaches, Our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, authorities, powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of the enemy in the heavenly realms. So as Christian soldiers in God's army, we're not fighting the Philistines anymore. The battle of Jericho was won long ago. In our time, those who say that this nation or that leader is the embodiment of Satan are wrong. They're misled, they're deceived. We know that the powers of hell use lies and all kinds of manipulation to lead people to sin and do great evil. But no one ever extinguished evil by killing a man. The evil endures. It deludes others and becomes stronger. Now we may be called upon to fight to defend our country or to fight overseas against tyranny and oppression, but the battles in the war we fight as disciples of Christ are in the realm of soul and spirit. As Paul told Timothy, we must be strong not in worldly weapons, but in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, as we strive to bring glory to our heavenly commander. The enemy we fight as Christian soldiers is first of all personal. A commercial that I've seen on TV recently illustrates this. A young man is crossing a city street. Suddenly, he is confronted with an exact duplicate of himself. Each blocks the other's way. They grapple and try to overcome each other, but they're perfectly matched. Neither can win. Just as suddenly, the young man turns around and discovers he's alone again in the crosswalk. It's a public service message about getting help with addiction. The person fighting the disease struggled against his own corrupted nature. Likewise, we fight against our corrupted nature that is addicted to sin, selfishness, and rebellion against God. First, we must put off any temptation to engage in gross sin, murder, adultery, theft, rage, slander, and all these are conceived in our hearts and born as sinful acts when we yield to temptation. Now, I'm sure all of you are succeeding in that daily struggle. 
the more hidden battle we face is against our selfish desire to put what we want first, to turn our focus away from God and helping our neighbor to seek our own pleasures and benefits above all else. God has given us heavenly equipment for our battles. As he wrote in Ephesians chapter 6, Therefore put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, stand with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes with the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. See how Paul describes each of the seven elements in our holy armory. <coughs> we wrap the belt of truth around our waists so that we are ready for the journey. The breastplate of righteousness protects our hearts from pain and grief of sin. Our feet are fitted with the gospel which lights our path and guides us according to God's will. Our faith in Christ is a shield that extinguishes the flaming arrows of the enemy. And with the hel helmet of salvation, our minds are protected from being conformed to the pattern of this world, but instead are transformed and renewed by the Spirit so that we can test and approve God's will, His good, perfect, and pleasing will. All of these arms defend us from the works of Satan, yet there is one, only one offensive weapon, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. All Scripture is God-breathed, useful for teaching, correction, and reproof. God's Word is living and active, able to divide between bone and marrow, and soul and spirit. Finally, we have the most powerful weapon of all, prayer. Your prayers rise to the heavens and enter the throne room of God as fragrant incense, pleasing and acceptable to our mighty Lord. Equipped with the full armor of God, we run the race set out for us as trained athletes, faithful to the calling he has given each of us. It is not a it's a long distance relay. As parents, we pass the torch of faith to our children. As leaders and elders, we pass our mantles to a younger generation of men and women that we have trained and prepared to succeed us. And finally, as workers and harvesters in the fields where our Lord has stationed us, we come to him with prayers of thanksgiving and hope at the end of each day. And we come together in this place each Sabbath to worship and receive from him the heavenly feast of his body and blood given with the consecrated bread and wine. So fight the good fight of holy Christian living with prayer, forgiveness, and acts of loving kindness Run the race without stopping, staying the course, and not swerving to the right or the left. Come to receive healing and strength by God's word and sacrament in the divine service, where God's spirit comes to serve us, like the ten lepers. Jesus has made you clean by his word. Come to his feet with praise and thanksgiving, with joy in the everlasting victory he has won for you. God's people say, Amen. Amen. We continue our worship service with the hymn. We come to, your, to you for healing, Lord.
Heavenly Father, we pray for our new members who have joined us. We pray for our country, for peace and prosperity. We pray for our leaders, that you may guide them in wisdom. We pray for those who serve and protect us, our first responders, those who serve in the military. And we pray for those in need, those who are homeless, unemployed, hungry, lonely, afraid, persecuted, oppressed. And we pray for those among us who are sick, for Eric Davidson, Bob O'Boyle, Bailey, and Edie Arthur. And for those in mourning, the families of Charles McElhaus and the family of Ron Conkle. We pray for Joan Ofner, Judy Stark, Susan Alt, Fred Burke, Kim Trock, and for um, anniversaries, Barbara and Louis Geigel, Cindy and Jim McLean. Gracious Father, confident of your love, we place our prayers and all else that you know we need, as well as our loved ones, before your throne of grace, <laughs> trusting in your mercy and grace, through the strong and sure name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive ye the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our closing hymn, Lead On, O Eternal King. <laughs>